is where we discuss the possibilities. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Corey Probst, a wellness director and vice president of the Diet Doc and health psychologist, and I'm here today with Brittany Garcia. She's our owner in La Grande, Oregon, and I'm happy to have her here today. We're diving back into our macro mastery segment, and Brittany just happens to be a macro master herself. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be talking about meal prep mastery today as part of the segment. Hi, Brittany. Hello, I'm super excited to talk about this today. Well, you're really good at it. This is one of your areas of expertise, I would say. Thanks. Um, yeah, and, and I think it's one of the things that your clients love about you the most is you just have this vast knowledge about prepping food and how to cook. And, and most importantly, you do it in a way that is easy. You, you make it you explain it in a way that makes it very convenient for people to start building it into their skills and, and to create habits. And so thank you for being here first. Yes. And first, I mean, can we start off with you just giving our listeners and our viewers a little bit of an introduction in terms of how you got into food prep and cooking? Yeah. So on a previous episode, we talked, I did mention my history and like cooking for H. So if we went that far back, I mean, that's where it all started, I guess. For H. Yes. Um, but like all, you know, aside from that, when I first started um, losing weight myself, mm -hmm. I had this moment and it's funny how we remember these like very distinct standing in my kitchen in my old apartment building and I remember saying, like, well, in order to lose weight, you're going to have to stop cooking, like cooking the way you cook, you know, oh, because stop cooking. Huh? Well, it felt like it. It felt like you're I mean, there's nothing all the recipes you cook. I love to bake. Okay. And in order to do this, it was really making weight loss hard. Right. Like because um, you've always loved to cook. But you mm -hmm. were recognizing that the way in which you were cooking and the ingredients that you were using weren't going to facilitate your goal. Exactly. Okay. Like, I baked a lot, okay? I probably don't bake as much as I used to bake. <laughs> but, I baked a lot. I used to bake a lot also, yes. Yeah, it's not something I do as much of. And so I remember thinking that that part of my life had to be over. And we just need to keep it simple, you know, like chicken breast and broccoli. Here we come. Um, <laughs> well, and to your point, Brittany, I think that's what a lot of clients believe. Yeah. Our, our chronic dieter clients are coming to us and they have these very staunch beliefs about what's going to be mm -hmm. bad, bad, what they can't eat, and then how they're going to have to eat in order to lose weight most effectively. And you've kind of put the kibosh on all of that stuff. Um, in terms of, you know, your food can actually be mm -hmm. healthy, it can be really tasty, and it doesn't have to contain a million different ingredients that you're never going to use again. <laughs> and it doesn't have to take that long. Very we'll, good. We'll come to that. <laughs> but at that moment, like I mentioned before, it was like, you know what, take it as a challenge. You don't think you can cook? anymore because you can't lose weight like challenge yourself because you can you know like that's kind of how I took it and um so then it was like okay how can I make all my favorite food healthier and so meal prep for me since that was what we're talking about has evolved okay mm -hmm. I have done every version of meal prep I have made really fancy recipes and put it into six containers for three different meals that were all stacked in my fridge and beautiful and don't touch it anybody else because this is mine like I've done that I mean I competed in bodybuilding so I think anyone who has has done that but I've also like evolved to let's just cook a bunch of protein sources and then we can add that to meals throughout the week um, so meal prep has looked a lot it's looked a lot different depending on my schedule, my family's schedule. Yeah. My husband has a really challenging schedule. So 
we, I mean, for me, I meal prep for everyone. I like to cook and, but meal prepping for my husband's dinners is, Hey, he doesn't get to eat dinner with us. So whatever we eat for dinner, I will just put in a container. And tomorrow when he goes to work, he takes that to dinner. So, I mean, that is meal prep also. And some people do this with leftovers, right? They put leftovers in containers and have them the next day. Mm -hmm. So it's not just like we work with our clients and macros, right? Like it's not a one size fits all. There's different ways to lose weight. There's different ways to meal prep. So I think that's the big one. And the other thing that I wanted to say, and I think this will help people that do like to cook, especially, and then there's people who don't like to cook. And um, one of my biggest challenges professionally, I think, is that I have to remember that not everybody wants to love to cook, <laughs> right? Like I, I want to like teach them. Yeah, I want to teach them like cooking is fun. It's enjoyable. And they're like, no, no, I just want to get it over with. Like I'll yeah. do it, but I want right. to get it done as quickly as mm -hmm. I can. I recognize the benefits of meal prep, but mm -hmm. I know I don't want to spend hours in the kitchen and I don't want to be thinking so hard about what can I substitute this with? And I don't want it to be complicated. Mm -hmm. And to your point, like to challenge that a little bit, mm -hmm. I don't want to spend a lot of time doing it either, even though I love to do it. Like I can love to do it and spend 15 minutes doing it. Okay. So let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. What are your goals going into a meal prep session? Like what are your three top intentions? When I go in into a meal prep session, which lately, like, it's not really a meal prep session. So when I go in there to, it's typically on a weekend, Saturday or Sunday, whichever day I'm home, my intention is how, how many times can I cook today that will also cook for, like, five other days? Great. I think so. Yeah. So if I'm cooking breakfast, okay, I'm this is what I'm having for breakfast. I'll probably have something similar all week. Yeah. So what is taking the most time during this breakfast that I can make for the rest of the week? So for example, if somebody is having like some veggies cooked up or like scrambling eggs with veggies or something, chop all those veggies, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Chop so now we all of them so you can use them later throughout the week. Yes. Got it. And then we're at lunchtime. We're typically having a, a salad. And so I'm going to grill like enough chicken that I can't fit any more on my grill. Yeah. Right. And then I have that for the whole week. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I take it one step further and I lay out nine giant glass bowls. Mm -hmm. Not, why did I say nine? I was, I meant to say six. It's an upside down nine. Anyways. Um, I lay out all of these bowls. Better than six, I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so then I put six different, six lettuce in the bowl, yeah. right? So that when I go to work on Monday, I take all five of them now because if I had Sundays at home. Yeah. So then I take all of those to my office. Um, so, but now I don't have to do that again for like six days. Yeah. And then at dinner time. I will try to prep something also that I'm for one of the weeknights that are going to be busier, but I don't. So people might think, well, that's a lot of time in the kitchen. Well, I would have breakfast, lunch, and dinner anyways. Yes. So I might as well just spend 10 extra minutes. I mean, the chicken is going to take 14 ish minutes to cook at the most. But it's on so, the grill and you can be doing other things while it's cooking. Exactly. And if, why would I grill one meal's worth when I could grill six meals worth? Yeah. And it don't even, doesn't even all have to be chicken. I could put like some burgers on the grill while I'm grilling chicken. Mm -hmm. So now I have more than one kind of protein. So that's, that would be probably all three wrapped into one. Okay. No, that's awesome. Like this morning when I was making my breakfast and my breakfast is typically the same, I was also cooking a pound of ground Turkey mm -hmm. because I needed that for my breakfast, but it was also going to be in my lunch today and then mm -hmm. it'll be in my breakfast tomorrow and my lunch tomorrow. So I get exactly what you're saying. I, I try to do things in like batches throughout the week 
to instead of just designating one day, which mm -hmm. I hear a lot of different people doing and it works for them and that's fine. I don't want to do that. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want to spend three hours in the kitchen on a Sunday just cooking food. That doesn't mm -hmm. sound fun to me. Um, so I will, I will find, and I don't even necessarily schedule it. It's just I'm in the kitchen already anyway, and so I might as well cook this because mm -hmm. this is, I need it, and it'll be available for the rest of the week. Yeah, but I never was that competitor who put every single meal for the week in a container and they were all lined up beautifully in the fridge. <laughs> it was, I've got a massive Tupperware container full of steamed broccoli, of roasted cauliflower. You don't have a husband or a, a child probably, right? <laughs> I have a husband I, and don't. And <laughs> I don't have a child either. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> So that actually brings me into another really good point that I wanted to bring up. Yep. So um, we, you've heard it, any coach has heard it, like, I made this great food and I put it in the fridge and then my kids ate it. <laughs> and well, even though I don't have a kid or a husband, I do have a partner that I live with <laughs> disappear and I'm yeah. like, uh, where did that go? <laughs> mm -hmm. Now we have designated shelves. Oh. Like, hey, honey, this shelf right here, like all these c containers right here, those are yours. <laughs> <laughs> off all the roasted vegetables and everything. <laughs> if you tell me you want them, I'm happy to cook them. But exactly. That's my point. Like we want our, I want my family to be healthy. Yeah. Totally. And so rather than buying my family junk food that I might cave to in a weak moment, right? Mm -hmm. How about we just make more of the good stuff? Totally. Because yeah. then we can get everyone on board. And that brings me to like the biggest complaint we hear that it, and not necessarily complaint, it's just something that people will believe is a barrier. Okay. Let's, let's put it that, that way. Yeah. And that is that, well, I don't want to cook more than one meal. And so-and-so doesn't like this. And so-and-so doesn't like that. And so I end up like, I don't know, Making not getting to eat. Meals a night. Yeah. And I don't want to cook five meals. Oh my gosh. I think I hear that at almost every console I have. I don't want to have to cook multiple meals for my family. So if you tell me I'm going to have to eat this certain thing, I don't think I can do it. And I don't want them to do it. I am probably guilty of having rolled my eyes a few times when I hear that, <laughs> to be uh -huh. honest. And I'm like, then don't cook five meals. Right? <laughs> so for one, like I'm really, really lucky that my daughter and husband love my creativity in the kitchen and never, ever complain about what I cook. If I cook something they don't really love, what I see is they go to the kitchen later, right? <laughs> or like something else because they weren't satisfied. So this is why, like, I live on both sides here. You don't have to make multiple dinners, right? Like, I want you to be able to feed your family the same stuff you're cooking. However, mm -hmm. there are some foods that... I'm going to use my family as an example. Nora one day was eating dinner. That's my daughter. And she was frustrated. And I was like, what's wrong? Like she was almost in tears. Oh, yeah. And she's like, mom, I can't eat a salad. I don't know how to put it on my fork. Oh. Right? Oh, well, I love salads. Yeah. So I don't want to not eat a salad. But I don't want to have her in tears, frustrated, because she can't get it on her fork. So rather than cooking three different meals, right, our plates can look different, but the same almost, right? Like she has the bell peppers, the cucumbers, the chicken. She's got all that stuff on her plate. Mom's is just plated differently. Right. You know, maybe she has her chicken in a tortilla or something, and I don't want the tortilla. Yep. So I'm not cooking different dinners, right? But we have a lot of the same foods on our plate. Yes. And so I don't think, I think that sometimes when we tell our clients, well, you don't have to cook multiple dinners. They're like, yeah, well, my kid's not going to eat a salad. But will your kid eat veggies yeah. that are just not in a salad? 
Um, and maybe your husband too, if he won't eat veggies or salad, right? Like there's, there's ways to, um, so, I mean, when you've prepped these ingredients, so this is my biggest tip that I want to make sure to give to everyone is when you're meal prepping and maybe let's step back, maybe you're not even meal prepping, but you're trying to plan out what you're going to cook for dinner for yeah, your family. Can I stop you for a second? Because I, yeah, think- I might ramble. Well, no, you're not. And you're making really good points. But I just got to thinking that the actual term of meal prepping Mm -hmm. actually make it more complicated for people. Right. Called it just um, planning item cooking, cooking items, (laughs) (laughs) cooking. (laughs) But but what I'm getting at is rice, Uh potato, (laughs) chicken. Mm -hmm. And like you said, I can put all of that stuff in a big salad and mash it up for a meal, or Mm -hmm. it's just each individual item separately. And there may be a sack of tortillas there too, and cheese. And I don't have to eat all of that stuff, but I can if I want to. Mm -hmm. Ben needs a lot more carbohydrates than I do. So he probably is going to wrap up my salad in a tortilla and add a cup of beans to it. Mm-hmm. So I'm not, I'm not meal prepping per se, but I am, I'm f- food item prepping that yeah. can turn into meals. What you're doing is you've heard that saying that there's nothing in the house to eat. There's just a bunch of ingredients, <laughs> oh, right? That, that is, yes. it's ingredients. Yeah. yeah, people could just cook those ingredients because that's what takes the most time. Like rice, I'm such a whiner. I'm like, oh my God, the rice cooker takes longer to cook than I do. Right. Because I have dinner on the table in 10 minutes yes. almost every single night. Yes. And so the rice cooker takes 20 to 25 minutes. <laughs> you to do that before dinner. Yeah. Have the rice ready before dinner and then you just mm-hmm. warm it up. Yep. Those Ziploc steam bags. Little quick tip. Yes. They make three. This is revolutionary. (laughs) Right? Ziploc steam bags are the best, but not just for steaming um, food. They also make reheated rice perfect. Mm, So if you. Sometimes it's crunchy and nasty. Yeah. Yeah. It like revives it. It's like CPR for your rice or something. CPR for your rice. That's that's (laughs) it. Anyways, back to my. Back to my tip, because I don't want to run out of time. So when you're planning your meals, right, you've got like, okay, we have five dinners Monday through Friday that are quick, quick, quick. We got to get them out on the table. Mm -hmm. We have soccer practice or whatever it is. Pick a protein. Okay, so if your family is not going to eat the same thing every night, they're going to kill Corey if she makes them eat chicken breast again or whatever the case is. What I do is I make sure to buy at the store when I am, have not done any planning. Like today might be that day. I'm going to just walk into the grocery store and I'm going to make sure I have five different proteins that can be for dinner in the fridge or in the freezer. So this could be, I always have a roast in the freezer. That's the fastest right there. That's crock pot. I've got some chicken breast. They can survive one night with chicken breast. We've got ground beef, ground turkey, and maybe chicken thighs. Put all those in the fridge or freezer and I always have a drawer designated in my fridge that I it's not a drawer it's a basket I've put in my fridge that looks like a drawer and it's for meat raw meat so if it like leaks or something mm-hmm. yeah so every day there needs to be something in that drawer thawing or ready to cook right. once you know what the protein is and you can even cook all of that on the weekend if you want take it a step further but if you at least have it now you have like the centerpiece for your meal. So now if you like, you can put it with a salad, you could steam vegetables. If you have to open a can of vegetables, you can, if you I throw- love canned vegetables. Thank okay. You very much. Yeah. Okay. I- canned vegetables. Depends on the vegetable. I always think of the worst, like creamed corn or something. Well, so most people would think <laughs> I'm completely disgusting, but I loved canned spinach. I really? eat it. Okay, you're special. Oh, That's Popeye. To, right I was going to do the, yeah. <laughs> That's where Corey's <laughs> muscles came from, guys. It's from canned spinach. I grew up eating canned spinach. <laughs> I still love it. <laughs> I like canned green beans. That's Me my, too. Me that's too. mine. 
but I don't hardly ever eat them. So then there's freezer too. You yeah. got like nowadays what's really cool is you don't even need a Ziploc steam bag because almost all the veggies come in a bag you can throw in the microwave. Yeah. Um, and then again, if you've made rice on the weekend or roasted some like root vegetables for a starchier carb, Mm-hmm. All you have to do is, and okay, you don't even have to roast them right now. You just throw them on the grill, especially if you live in a place where grilling is seasonal, which I don't understand because I grill all year, but throw all your veggies on the grill. It's faster than roasting them. Okay, but now I'm thinking like a client who's never used a grill before and right. what's the easy way to do that? So I, there's two ways. They do make like what looks like a cookie sheet that goes on your grill. And I'll just put my veggies, like I use a cooking oil spray Mm -hmm. and I'll just mist the pan or really I just mist the veggies, not the pan. And then I just set them on the grill. You just got to watch them because, and it depends on the vegetable, but like I, we, you know this, but I have a cooking course I've put online and this is the kind of stuff I'm teaching because a lot of, especially women are very timid around a barbecuer. So I have I an ent- barbecue. I just don't like to smell like one. Oh, I am all about <laughs> barbecue. So I, I, I wonder if I smell like one. Out when I'm already smelly. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> um, so, but you can grill. I can make a whole meal on a barbecue and it's faster and it doesn't heat up my house. I don't have air conditioner. Take mm-hmm. pity on me, I guess, but I don't want to ha- use my oven during the. Oh, yeah. During the summer, especially roasting, which takes like an hour to do. So Mm -hmm. I try to cut back on that time with the barbecue. And like I said, my course I have, it walks you through everything, including how to put out a fire on a barbecue. Because it's it's inevitable. It's going to happen. And Are you using like briquettes? No. Is it a gas grill? Yeah. Okay. I'm like, you are hardcore if you're like starting a fire with wood kindling. And <laughs> no. <laughs> Corey, things can catch on fire in your barbecue. So as you get started to start cooking more, right? Like there's going to be some moments where things don't turn out. You just have to be prepared for that. And don't like make yourself think, well, I'm a horrible cook. I can't do this. I oh, just Because it's going to happen. I've caught my stove on fire and my barbecue. The stove never did recover. If you do something for a long enough period of time, you're back yeah. to run into stuff. Just always have baking soda in your kitchen. Oh, that's smart. If you don't have a fire extinguisher, which I have both, but the baking soda seems safer to me. Very good tip. You guys hope you're <laughs> listening to this because you're getting very excited about going into your kitchen or going outside to your grill and mm-hmm. trying some new things, right? Yeah, I hope so. I hope I haven't terrified people to cook. But yeah, like, and you know, again, you can have, I made a whole list of five, like 10 different meals that you could make with just a chicken breast, a leftover chicken breast, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Like there, we think we need fancy recipes. And I think that's a big barrier for a lot of people because you don't. Um, I, I have to force myself to try a recipe. And then I'm like, maybe you should try it the way it says before you change everything about I it. I am guilty of that too, Brittany. <laughs> I will see a recipe and I'm automatically, it's like my default setting. Uh-huh. I would not do that. I would replace <laughs> this with that. Yes. I would add this seasoning and take that one out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Which I is, am, an- go ahead. <laughs> Which is another thing. Like, some of us that think we're cooking is are bland, like go back to chicken and broccoli, right? Use spices. I know that you want to find the recipe that has the minimal amount of them because it's overwhelming to see a long list of them. They're my favorite thing. Yeah, but like you got to use some salt and pepper, okay? You got to like try a new spice. Like just <laughs> do it because your food is going to taste better and you're going to want to spend more time cooking, right? That's so funny. My mom... I swear, every time I see her, she's like, I'm so sick of chicken. And I'm like, well, (laughs) why are you only eating chicken, number one? And number two, mom, how are you cooking your chicken? Don't tell me she baked it. 
she does bake it, but I bake mine okay. all the time, but it doesn't turn out like uh, chalk. Okay, well, that's <laughs> what I think of when I... <laughs> seasoning wise too and it so it just really makes me sad when people aren't enjoying their food when they me sit down to a meal and they look at their plate and they're like I don't but no it shouldn't be that way <laughs> you and I are the same way we just will not eat it no we'll nope. different meal please <laughs> <laughs> take it away <laughs> so well, it you can consume this or I'm gonna I'm going to change it in some way and make it into a meal that I'll enjoy later, but it needs to be flavorful. Mm -hmm. And spices are a great way to do that. I do think that spices scare people too, though. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to add. Number one tip with spice, Brittany, if you could give them one, what would it be? Well, okay. Number one tip for those of us dieting, quit being afraid of salt. <laughs> That's my favorite spice. Mine too. Look, I have a thing of it right here at my desk. Packets of it everywhere. I travel with salt. No. Well, but think about how many people are, they won't put salt on their food or pepper. Maybe they don't think they like pepper, but like those are the most two basic spices. And if you're eating healthy, you need to put salt on your food because you're not eating boxed foods and canned foods and McDonald's is not making your dinner for you. Like, you can put some salt on there. Mm -hmm. um, I also, I love cumin and chili powder. Ooh, cumin Those are two. Favorite. Cumin and chili powder and garlic powder are the ones I replace the most often. Yeah. Um, I made a spice rack essential list for my course, and it has like three tiers, right? Like if you want to be the basic chef or if you want to be like the, I think I called it the fancy chef is like the top tier because so like these are the ones that yes you have to have them it's like a requirement mm -hmm. and then these are the ones that are nice to have and then these are the ones that like it would be worth it to try like white have you ever tried white ground pepper no i haven't it's very good unless you don't pepper. like spicy I'm not, a, I'm not a pepper person although i i like the food peppers mm -hmm. and I like chili peppers and mm -hmm. i like um, it's not black ground pepper correct yeah. The white pepper has, it'll give something like a little spice. So roasted carrots with, yeah. with, um, white black pepper or white, white ground pepper is really good. Unless you don't like spicy food, it has more of a kick to it. I do like So mm -hmm. yeah, don't put it on your kids' carrots. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I've done that. Awesome tip. Do not put ground white, white pepper. Yeah. On your kids' carrots, folks. Yes. Or they do, and like prepare to laugh. <laughs> <laughs> or <fun>. yes. <laughs> uh, but oh, yes. So Don't pretty. be afraid of spices. Yeah. Th these are really excellent tips. Um, thank you for taking the time today. I think that hopefully we provided you guys with immediately applicable <laughs> ways mm -hmm. of of cooking that take the significant amount of time and complexity out of creating a, a healthy and tasty meal. So Brittany, tell people where they can find you. you. You keep mentioning this course. People might be interested in that. Yeah. So the Diet Doc Legrand, we have a Facebook. We also have a website, which is the Um, Don't forget the the, right? Uh, and then I'm on Instagram, B Fitness Diet Doc, and I have lots of food photos. I try to have. I sometimes forget that I should continue to post them because it's something I've just done for so long. But we like to see other people's food. Nora always will tell me, "Mom, did you take a picture of that? It looks very pretty." <laughs> <laughs> um, so you can find me there, and my course is on my website and my shop link. Um, and then anybody can always email me, which is bfitness at the diet doc dot com for questions about it too. So beautiful, perfect, Brittany. Yeah. Well, thank you again, and thank you everyone for listening and tuning into the Diet Doc Life Mastery podcast. We'll be back with more awesome information that you can apply to your lives. Thanks again. Thanks, Corey. Yep. <laughs>